G'day guys, Dylan Buckley here and we're back for another episode of Friday Knockoffs brought to you by friends at Pepper Jack. This week on the show, Tony Armstrong, Eddie Everywhere, he's doing everything, TV, radio, even writing his own scripts. This man does it all. I love him to death. Cannot wait for a chat. He's actually waiting for me now. I've got to go. Tony Armstrong, oh, how so are you, my friend? Hey. Oh, a long time no Fancy see. Fancy being here. I know. Hey, Friday. Oh. Oh. Knockoffs? Friday. How good? How have you been, Jack? mate? Good. How have you been? Good. Busy, but good. Good. Yeah, good. yeah, yeah. Well, you're the second busiest man in Australia. <sighs> Who's the first? Me. We all like to write our own yeah. reviews, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> do, do. No, you are the busiest man. What's been happening? You're doing... You're already everywhere. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. We've spoken about that offline. But we love it. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I just I just sent a hat in hand. I apologise. <laughs> and here I am on your show being somewhere else. I know. We love <laughs> so it. I'm sorry about that. You've got to give the people what they want. Yeah, and that's more you. It is. Um, <laughs> talk us through what's happening of late because your breakfast... ABC yeah, so, so Brecky, Brecky TV. Um, so I do that five days a week um, on the ABC. Yes. Um, like, subscribe. No, uh, um, no, on the ABC, um, so just the Brecky show, so we're on air from six till nine. Um, and then just some other projects, just had a dog show come out. Um, got another couple exciting things in the works, which I shouldn't have said then, because now you're going to ask me about them and I'm not ready to talk about them yeah. properly, but here we are, that's a mistake. Yeah, um, we will talk about them very shortly. Um, but no, there, there's a fair bit going on. How about you? Good. How's, no, how's the swing? I'm busy. Swing's good. We're actually playing golf together on Sunday, yeah. which I'm really looking forward to. It's almost like you thought I forgot. No, no, I, no. I, 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 I no. had the state penciled in. No. And, yeah, I've been training, like, think Rocky Montage, but me with golf clubs. Well, think about the, the last time we played, if you want to take back to that. Who, how did that go? Do you remember? Oh, I remember actually can't remember. Hazy. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, I won. So it was exciting. I'm looking forward oh, to Sunday. So I must have suppressed, repressed, deny. You did. Suppress, repressed, deny. Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. yeah, well, it'll be very imminent and very close. Again, this, um, just on the breakfast TV stuff, mate, mm. it's exciting. It's incredible. You're dominating. You're doing incredible things. Talk us through the lifestyle, though, because it's, it's, I can't get a hold of you after 3 p.m. normally. Yeah, oh, mate, I am. Um, man, it's kind of weird. Hey, like, I'm, I'm a natural night owl. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I mean, sort of. I guess the best way to describe it is you're permanently jet lagged. Mm. So like I I I I forget to do like, like very simple things in the middle of the day and all that kind of stuff. And then I just I'll just sleep at all. I could sleep for Australia at the moment. Um, so yeah, I get up at sort of half half three um, in there at four. Um, that's after a cry, mm -hmm. of course. Of course, yeah, in the Wake shower. up, yeah. cry. Yeah. Shower, yeah. cry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Car, cry. <laughs> yeah, um, and then, yeah, no, I get there and it's great, you know. Um, no, but it is, like, the work itself is great. The only bad thing is the time. Mm. But, I mean, who cares? No, no one cares when you complain, so I won't. Isn't, what about weekends? It's hard to keep a schedule, like, with that time and the sleep and waking up. Well, as you know, we've got a lot of the same friends, um... And, you know, everyone's doing stuff. Mm. Uh, everyone's going out for dinners, going to gigs, all that kind of stuff, especially now um, that everything's kind of back going. Um, it's hard to say no. Uh, so, yeah, sometimes that Monday morning alarm hits a bit different. Yeah. Um, but that's all right. How about you, mate? How are you, how are you settling in here? Mate, I'm good. I'm loving it. Obviously, got this incredible role at the AFL now. I think that, you know, when you went on to doing incredible things, they needed someone half as handsome and half as talented on... And half mm. as cheap to sort of step in, so um, they called uh, someone else. They couldn't do it. Yeah. They... And then they called. Then they called me, and I was they like, couldn't yeah, do I'm it. I was has... like, well, uh, twice as handsome, <laughs> yeah, twice Kane as expensive, has. and taller. I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So no, I'm loving it, mate. Been super busy this start of the year, but um, it's always good to sit down, reflect, and have a chat with you. I want to. I want to talk about you though, because your rise hasn't been an overnight success. You know, they talk about that like 30 year overnight success. You know that saying when they say, they think that like this person just came out of nowhere. Yeah, it's like it's like a you know they go um, someone someone's worked ten years at something. It's like the fellow who wrote um, uh, hung, uh, not Hunger Games, uh, Squid Games. Yes, it took that fellow like over a decade to get that show made. Mm. Like that fellow had that script made forever, right? And then it finally Netflix picks it up, they option it, whatever. They get they make it, bang, biggest show in the world. Um, but he'd been working at it and sticking, and sticking with the dream. So, um, yeah, I mean, like, 
everything's happened pretty fast um, lately, but at the start it certainly wasn't quick. You mm. know, I was working on Indigenous radio on the NIRS, which is still going now. You should listen to it. It's 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 fantastic, run by Andrew Underwood. Um, some great Indigenous callers. Um, Andy Cracker, who's one of the hosts of Yoka Footy, actually um, uh, commentates on there now Star. as well. Um, and yeah, it's like you do all of these crappy jobs, um, uh, little bit pieces here and there that you don't think you want to do, uh, like from a financial perspective, but you do it because you want to get good and you just keep buttering up, you keep running up, mm. and then the momentum sort of picks Builds. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what that's like. Like when the podcast started, compared to what it is now, like people, people would just be thinking, you know, You've got all of these subscribers, all of these listeners, all of that kind of stuff. But that doesn't come without doing it to no one. No, it does. Start. Yeah, it does. It takes time. It takes 100% of time. But it's interesting as well, and I reflect, and I know we chat about this a lot, but how much do you look back now on footy? Mm. You know, incredible career, three clubs, 31 games across three clubs. Wrong, 35, mate. Let's... I, I don't count the other four because you didn't get a touch in them. So I'm just hey, hey, I, I can, when you only play 35, you, you count make every a... single yeah. one, mate. No, I agree. But I, you do have I to be good to go to 39. three clubs. How many clubs did you go to? I went to two clubs, but I played okay, 39. So... <laughs> clubs or games, I guess. That's what it comes down to. I don't think anyone yeah, counts no their clubs. Crap, right? yeah. I mean... no, no one counts their clubs. I can tell you now, no one counts their clubs. The hey, question, I'm an enigma, mate. The question being is, <laughs> looking back now and, like, your career, you've gone through, and we probably both didn't leave the way we wanted to, mm. but how much do you look on that now into the next phase and you take that hunger and what you learn out of it to do well? Well, I guess the biggest lesson I learned out of that was... Um, like, and it's probably the hardest lesson, uh, and we've spoken about this before, mm. but it's... Um, you, you can... Like you get sold this this story when you're a kid, where it's like, you know, if you work as hard as you can at something, like kind of no matter what, it'll work out. You know, you read any memoir of any superstar in mm. sport or whatever. It's like, you know what? I had it against me, but I worked hard, and because I worked hard, you know, it all worked out. But unfortunately, like that's that's one of that's one of the biggest myths. Um, you can try your hardest. You can have an honest, honest person's pillow, put your head on the bed every night, knowing you've done everything you can to be as good as you can, and it might not work out. And that that was a really hard lesson to learn in footy, um, because I wanted it so bad, you wanted it so bad, and it didn't work. And you cut at the end, like you you put a lot of emotional investment into it. But then when you when you kind of get over that and you reconcile with it, it's the best thing ever because you kind of become a bit fearless mm. because you're like, well, I've been, I've been at, you know, emotional rock bottom before, um, so I'm kind of not scared of having a crack at something. On the proviso, you try your hardest um, because, yeah, like, uh, who knows what will happen. And, yeah, and also if, if I had have been a 350-game superstar footballer, like, the stuff I'm doing now... To a degree, like the more creative stuff, I wouldn't be taken no. seriously because they'd be like, oh, he's just a footy player. Whereas no one, no one kind of knows I played footy, which is sick. Do you love that? Do you love oh. not being, you're just known as Tony Armstrong? What's, say that one more time. <laughs> you just love being known as the Tony Armstrong. You love that, don't you? Uh, mate, I mean, nah, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's nice not to have a former footballer, Tony. Yeah, Tony Armstrong. You'd be the same, right? It is, it's the exact same. Love being known of it. Hey, um, Pepper Jack's all about character, my friend. You've got that in spades. So Your I've got words. a question for you. Mm. What is the best piece of advice someone has ever given you? Well, I kind of touched on it then. Um, so Andrew McLeod uh, was my mentor when I was at the Adelaide Crows. Um, that was the first of three clubs uh, that I went to. Um, and he said <laughs> basically what I just said to you, but in reverse, he goes, brother, like, Whatever you do, don't come out the other end with regrets that you didn't train hard enough or mm. work hard enough or give it everything. Um, because if you've got that honest, and in my case, an honest man's pillow, yeah, you can be upset about it, but I'm, I, I'm not kept up at night wondering what if. Like, I gave it my all, I just wasn't good enough. And now that I've reconciled with it, that's fine. But 
had I, you know, dogged it a bit, you know, come up, come up a bit short on a whole, a whole range of things, I'd be sitting here going, could have been better than, you know. Yeah. Could have been, and I couldn't have been, because I wasn't, because I didn't, and I'm fine with that. I love that. It's mm. so good. You don't want to be that person sitting in the bar at the end of the day just saying, I oh, would have, should have We've been. We've met them all, haven't we? It's like, have. you know, you know, you go, you go to a local footy club or something like that and say, like, oh, mate, John, his brother could have been out of them. Yeah. But he could have been anything. It's like, well, he didn't. Mm. He wasn't. And that's, like, I'm happy that I gave it my best off the back of that advice. Yeah. And that's the best advice. I think just one thing that I love about you and, and the way you've handled yourself is... I know that didn't go the way you wanted, but it wasn't what happened, it was how you reacted to the next thing. Mm -hmm. And it was that humbleness, that no ego type personality to go, you know what, let's go head first into the next thing. Like mm -hmm. as soon as you finish, I was gonna get an advice from you. You're working for AFL Players Association. You're working just like really just good borderline jobs to then get to where you wanted to go next. Yeah, well, mate, you gotta keep a roof over your head. Like mm -hmm. I wasn't I wasn't necessarily ever earning decent decent cash as a foot like from a footballer's perspective and when I was younger I was I was a bit cavalier with the way I spent it so I didn't really come out with a war chest um so I I, I, I had to work and it was a little bit it, it was a little bit humbling because you know you've got a lot of guys around you who have they come out and they have their big holidays or whatever it is or you know they retire to their houses that have Choppers coming off the top of them, they're smoking cigars, whatever it is. Uh, but that wasn't my case. I had to butter up and go to work, and that's fine. Um, but yeah, what's the relationship like with footy now? Do you watch it? Do you love it? Are you still a, a fan of the game? I am still a fan of the game. I don't watch it as much as I used to. My role at ABC, like and subscribe, um, is that I I'm, I'm I'm the sports anchor, so I do have to be across it all. Which is fine because that's not a chore. However, I guess working in footy itself, I've kind of pulled back a little bit mm. from from that. I do I do I do a little bit here and there because I find that footy can be super consuming when you work in it. Um, I love the game for what it is, but I wouldn't say I'm obsessed like I used to be. Like love the Swans, watch all of their games, but I'm I'm not sitting there on a you know a Saturday Arvo for no reason, just watching a game. I'll be, I'll be out doing something else. Love How it. about you? I don't watch as much footy as I used to. That's definitely for sure. I'm too busy trying to play golf and refine my swing at the moment. Mm. But finals is something... It needs refining. No, it doesn't. Finals is something that is always... I always love, and I love watching heated games. Even, like, Anzac Day a couple of weeks ago. It was yep. so good to watch. So good to watch. But, um, yeah, it's interesting to reflect. And I suppose I'm in that spot now, and I don't really get to hear you talk too much about your career, which is which is something that I'm really keen on. Mm. Going back, reflecting, what's a couple of moments, maybe one from each club, that you're just extremely proud of now? And you look back and you go, that was sick. Um, OK, so, yeah, far out. Should have read those questions that you sent through <laughs> before. Um, so, no, nah, OK, so the first one that, the, that comes to mind, it's funny how footy does this. Um, my first year of playing senior footy at the Crows, we were playing against Frio, it was 2010. Frio were quite a good side that year. Um, it was Mick Barlow, one of our great mates, mm. first years. Um, uh, and they were playing really well. Like, they were in top four. Ross Lyon was coaching them. Anyway, we were, I played round one against them. We got smashed over there. That was my debut. But then we pl I played the return leg, which was, like, round 11 um, at Amy... At what, was Amy Stadium then we played out at um West Lakes, not at Adelaide Oval. And um it was a pretty tight game. And I just like uh, I had this massive like one on one in the square with Roger Hayden, uh mm -hmm. superstar from from Frio. He'll end up in their Hall of Fame, absolute gun. Um and like I won it, like got rid of him, won the ball, gave it to Graham John Cock, we went the other end scored and we won the game. And, like, that's not a huge moment for so many people who you'll have sitting here. But for me, it was, like, a bit of a stuff you to people who thought I couldn't play in the one-on-one yeah. -on -one situations in those big moments. And I did that. And that was, that was sick. Um, the other one, 2012 at the Swans, um, we, we came down here to play Essendon at um, Mar what is now Marvel. And um, I think they were on top of the ladder. They were like 11 and one or 12 and one. 
we we'd come down from Sydney. We were playing pretty good footy, um, and we knocked them off. But we were up by like 56 points, and then last kick of the game, Courtney Court, Courtney Dempsey takes a mark on the right half forward flank, and goes to play on. I don't know if you remember. He goes to play on, and the siren goes, and we yes. were up by like a point. Yes. Like he wheeled, and it was like, and we were like, oh my god, thank. Um, because like for the last. No, five minutes of the game, I was like, please don't kick it to my man. Like, just let it go anywhere else. Yes. I don't want to be near this ball. I was nearly normally running off to the bench. To be um, yeah, but um, like I had, I had like, I think it was 26 or 27 touches that day. Played really well off half back. And like, it was like my, it was probably my best game at the level. Um, and then at Collingwood, oh, play that, that was crap at, at, at the Pies. Probably the two games in a day. Yes. Um, yeah, probably that. Um, I played two games in a day. Uh, yeah, they're they're probably my moments. It's funny, isn't it? What like, one sticks out for you? Well, that, thanks for asking. I was actually considering that as we were going, but I would look back now. Actually, I've got one more. Come on, one. Yeah. Um, playing for Sydney, we were playing a grand final rematch uh, on the G of, uh, against the Hawks. And like I've grown up idolising Adam Good. So I should have read the questions. I would have been better at this. I got the ball at half back, dodged. Uh, it was either Isaac Smith or Luke Bruce, I can't remember, like, stepped him and then, like, Goodsy on, like, a 60-metre lead just hit him, mm. like, just lace out. Mm. And I, like, the little boy in me was, like, like... Because, you know, you'd never, you never take stock of the moments. No. It was the only moment I properly took stock of. I was, like, you know, this is a packed MCG. I just kicked the ball to my hero. Hungry. Like, what the hell is happening? Yeah. Um... Uh, we lost the game, but like just that moment was 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 pretty sick. Mate, taking back to those, like I've definitely now you talking about. I've got a few, and mm. one of them genuinely, this is just really embarrassing. Mm. But it, I actually tackled Buddy Franklin once. That's and impossible, man. Have cool. you seen the size of him? It was. Did cool. you fall onto he, him? He was as sort a pack of, was already formed, well, and they gave be you honest, the tackle. He was like running at a pace, as you know how he gets that stride on. And momentum was coming, and I sort of jumped on, and ta- he got the kick away. But I just tackled him. I was like. I just tackled Buddy Franklin. Man, I had I had one of technically. them. Technically, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, don't, I never checked champion. Dunn. Yeah, you did. Oh, I did. You got no, it. I don't know if I got it because he got the possession away. Man, I had I had one with Bud. We were playing. I was at also. The... Um, I was going to tell another one. No, no, but I'll go. I'll go because it's a Bud one. Um, I um, you remember how it was the four two in the zone? Yes. Um, and anyway, I'm like, I was I was in the four on the edge, so like as one of the defenders, and Bud's, like, pretty high. He's inside defensive 50. And I, like, look, and they've, like, stacked my side. And I'm, like, calling for help. Anyway, um, anyway, Birchall kicks it out over the top of Bud. So it goes over the top of him. And I turn around and, like, the help hasn't come. So it's just, like, between, like, it's just me and Bud's got, like, you know, the back straight at Flemington. And so, anyway, I'm, like, all right, inside shoulder. Use the boundary as your friend. All right, watch his hips. <laughs> kind of come to, he's kicking it inside 50. Yeah, you know? yeah, getting on, on, Luke, Luke Hodges getting on the end yeah. of it. Goal ski. Yeah. Oh, man. Anyway, back to you. No, that's about it. I, I can't compete with those stories. But it is crazy you look back and the funny things. It's not actually like kicking the goals or anything. It's more like just those little idiosyncrasies that you remember where you're just like, what am I doing right now? What am I doing? Oh, I mean, yeah, footies, yeah. I mean, it's such a weird thing because you're so young when you're doing it. So young. You know, like you're, like, like, like you're 19, you're 20, and you're having these big kind of life-forming moments and you're going, I don't even know what to make of this. And, like, I think, I think if I started playing footy now with an 18-year-old's body, I'm, yeah. I might have a chance of, of getting there because, you know, my head's yeah. way more mature. That's, that's half the battle, really. Yeah, yeah, I mean, far out. Like, yeah, I just I could, didn't really probably fathom what I was trying to do when I was doing it. No. Um, besides boring footy stories, mm. I think everyone's sort of tuned out at the moment. Yeah, what's what's next for you? Because you are a man of so many different bloody things. You've got <laughs> everything going on. Can you tell us, can you give us a bit of an insight into what's next? Um, so hopefully, um, so I just did a dog doco, um, which went pretty well. What's your favourite dog? Huh? Well, Labrador. Okay. Labrador. Black Labs um, are my favourite, but all dogs are mint. Um, um, I, uh, I will probably do like another long form factual, uh, show. Don't know exactly how that looks. We're, we're working on a couple mm-hmm. and I've got a couple of creative kind of sc- uh, scripted endeavors that I'm 
that I'm chipping away at that I'm pretty proud of where they're at and we'll start we'll start pitching them pretty soon. Um, Give us a bit. So one of them, have you seen Atlanta? I haven't. So that's a that's a Donald Glover show. Um, uh, that's a really good touch point. Um, so but when so, you're talking about this as well, you're talking about actually producing the shows. So no, so, so like I'm writing, writing them. Wow. I'm writing them, like like writing writing the scripts. That's and incredible. Creating the worlds and all that kind of stuff. So so one of them, the one that's kind of like Donald Glover, Donald Glover's out, um, uh, Atlanta is just about. It's very informed by my life, but it's about I, uh, I guess identity and what people expect of you and what they project onto you when you don't really know who who or what you are. So there's that. It's like a dark comedy. Um, and the other one would be, have you seen The Mighty Boosh? I think I know. Is this The Wizards one? Yeah, this is The Wizards I one. I like this um, one. So this is like, so, so this one's about a couple of wizards um, who live in the world and act, and like like, Wizards in this world are completely normal. So it's like a wizard is the same as a butcher. It's just their job. Um, <laughs> I love this one. And um, they're just always, they've always got no cash. They're always like, like they just make mistake after mistake after mistake. And uh, they finally come up with a spell. I won't tell you what the spell is, but they come up with this spell that they, if they copyright it, because you can copyright spells the same way that musicians copyright songs, and then you know other people can use it. If they copyright this spell, they'll become rich and famous, and they'll be stars. And um, the spell gets stolen off them. So we we follow their trials and tribulations of them trying to get their spell back. I love it. It's, it's exciting. So silly. I'm very excited for that. Um, to, uh, going forward, Friday night ritual. Where are you watching the game? What's your what's your go to? So I've got a couple. Um, so I live uh, um, in the inner north of Melbourne. Um, so there's a, there's a couple of great pubs um, in, in Carlton North mm -hmm. that, that I like to go to. It's, it's either that, go to a pub and watch the footy, or I'm at home enjoying a beautiful, a be a beautiful bottle of Pepper Jack. That's so funny. You I say know, that. it's crazy you say that. That a is so crazy A, you a say beautiful that. bottle of Pepper Jack, maybe order in a, like a, I order a mean pizza. So oh. order in a mean pizza right. and um, hang yeah. on, what do you got back there? That is so funny you say that. I've actually got a bottle of Pepper Jack for you tonight to just go home and enjoy. Show me that. There you go. Look at that. That is so weird. Ching. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, so something like this. Would, I should come over. Would you like to? Mm. Um, what are you going to do, apart from tonight, where you're coming up? Uh, eat the pizza at yours. Thanks so much for coming on, bro. Mate, so much fun. Love you. Great to see you. Love you.